welcome to Pipes Around the House. Today I'm going to be using this Chimney Typhoon power brush system to sweep my wood burning stove flue. Now this kit is brand new so I'm going to show you how to assemble the kit, how to use the kit and I'll give you my thoughts along the way. Now I've been after one of these kits for a while so I contacted a company called Sourcing For You and they kindly sent me out this free of charge but I must point out that this review and demo is completely impartial and I'm not being paid to do this video. So first of all let's take a look inside the box. So you get your set of instructions, you get your brush head, you get an allen key, you get the attachment to attach it to your drill, a plastic bag to tape to your stove so you can keep the dust to a minimum, and then your pack of one metre drainage rods. Now this pack comes with 10, I asked for the 12 metre kit, so they kindly threw in an additional two rods. And in addition to the kit, you're gonna need a drill like this. Now whilst you could use an electric power drill, I imagine they're a bit overpowered and some of them don't have a forward and reverse function. On a battery operated drill like this, we can feather the speed so we can take it nice and easy and make sure we don't damage that flue. Also, you've got the forward and reverse function. So if you do it going up the chimney in a forward rotation, then as you come back down, you can put it in reverse and it means that you're getting a good clean out of all that soot in both directions. So let's take a quick look at how to assemble the kit. And taking a quick look at the brush head, it came supplied like this with all the bristles and the brushes through this plastic head. Now, when I felt it, it was ever so slightly loose. So what you wanna do is just move these around and make sure that they're central and located into this. And then using the Allen key supplied, if you go down inside there, you'll find there's a little allen key slot. So you can just tighten that up, like that, and make sure it's nice and secure. And if you go around the other side, you've got exactly the same in the other end. So just place your allen key inside there, and just tighten that up, like that. Making sure that all these bristles are secure, because you don't want to be losing those or the head up inside your flue. Now I've just measured the bristles, and they're 20 centimeters from there to there. So you've got 20 centimetres plus 20 centimetres this side and this plastic black bit is 5 centimetres, so an overall diameter of 45 centimetres. Now it's a good idea to trim these down to your required size. I've got a flue of 6 inches in diameter, so it's possibly worth trimming it down to about 9 inches, something like that, leaving a little bit of an overlap. Now in my situation I'm not going to do that because I've got an open fire next door and I want to use this on that and it's a much bigger flue size. So on my first trial run today I'm going to leave this as it is but trimming it down is entirely up to you. So the next thing to show you is the end of the rods. Now the one end is a female connector, like that, and the other end is a male connector, like that. Then we've got this adapter that allows the first rod to be attached to your drill. And the way this works is by placing this adapter into your drill, tighten up the chuck, and then taking the female end of your rod, you place that inside, push this little bit down there, and that will click into place just like that. Then you just connect the female end of the next rod to the male end on this rod. And you do exactly the same by pushing that button down there and that clicks into place and so on. And then we attach the brush which has a female connector to the male end of a rod. Now when we separate the rods later we can just use this end here of the allen key to push down the little button and remove one rod from the other. So just take the end of the allen key, push down on that button, and whilst you do it, try to just slide that out like that, and there we go, it will come apart. So the first thing we've got to do is get access to the flue. Now on my stove, which is an Argon Ludlow, you've just got to remove a metal plate which is just on the top of the stove by there. Now obviously, according to what stove you've got, this is going to be slightly different, so you just have to work that out for yourself. Some people also have an inspection chamber on the flue itself and you can remove that and gain access that way. So now I'm going to attach my brush head to my first rod, exactly like we did earlier. So you can just push that button down like that with your finger, click that into place. And first of all we're going to pop this in place and then we put the plastic sheet over the top. Now these rods are very flexible, so they should bend nicely into place, but you also don't want to force them. If you find there's any resistance now as we go up, bring them up and down gently, and once we get the drill on, we'll maybe wind it into place. You don't want to pull your flue off. So 
So now it's just a bit of arts and crafts. So I'm just going to cut this bag down to size. I'm going to probably use some insulation tape because that's what I've got available. I'm just going to stick it around there. I'm going to slit a little hole then in the plastic, pull this rod through, and then we can start to connect the rest of the rods on this side of the plastic so that we don't make any mess. And this is where you need to make sure you've got the right angle with this rod because you need to get your drill on the end. So you don't want it at 90 degrees because you don't want it flexing. So ideally you want your drill at that sort of angle, but make sure you've got enough room. So I'm going to put a slit in my plastic about by there. And so all you do is push that up. And just poke that through like that. And now that's through, I'm just going to carry on taping up. And just connect the next rod in. Obviously it's a bit of a lengthy process because we have to keep taking the drill off each length of rods by the time we get to there, but it is what it is. And you can see there by using the battery powered drill, I'm just feathering that trigger so it's, it's going up nice and slow. So go at that speed or I go faster like that. That's what it does say in the instructions, you have to be a bit careful. If you're going to rotate the drill and the rods, make sure you're pushing either forwards or backwards. You shouldn't over rotate it sat in one position because that can damage the flute. Now we just disconnect the rod like I showed you earlier from the drill bit like that and then attach the next rod and so on. And also just make sure that that little button is fully engaged in the next rod because if it comes loose in there you're going to struggle to get that back out. Because these rods are so flexible you can see that I can attach this drill about a meter away from the wood stove so although I actually said earlier to have it at an angle so your drill is by there it doesn't actually really make a difference as long as you're careful and you go nice and slowly I'm attaching it actually behind the camera and working my way in there no problem at all. This is the first rod here, I found it a little bit stiff. That button isn't actually going right the way down. So what I'm going to do is choose a different rod, and if I need this one later, I'm going to put a bit of WD-40 or some um, releasing fluid on it and see if that helps it go in. See on that one I had a bit of resistance then so I can only assume I've come to a bit of a kink or a bend up in the chimney and there was a hell of a lot more ash just came down as well so if you get that just take it easy just gently feather it through and it went up no problem at all but initially it felt like there was some resistance so just be careful if you push it too hard you don't want to pull your flue off also as you go through the plastic just make sure you feed the connector bit through because if it catches the plastic and you get hold of it it's going to twist it up and pull it off your wood burner now what i'm finding as well is the higher up this goes because of gravity i'm getting a lot of pressure trying to push it back down so you'll notice that when i'm getting my other rod i'm leaving the drill attached there so it can't push back out and then you've got to hold it with a bit of force. If I let go of that now, it's going to try and push this way. And I've noticed that's increasing as I'm going up the chimney. Just, just something to be mindful of. Now, according to how tall you think your chimney or your flue is, this is where you've got to be a bit careful. Because I'm now on 9 metres, so my next one's going to be 10 metres. So I'm roughly there. I bought the 12 metre pack because I'm not quite sure the length of it, you know, with all the bends. So we must be somewhere near the, the cowl at the top now, and we don't want to bang that off. So when you get around here, be really careful. If you feel any resistance, that's the time to go outside and see if you can see your orange brush up in your chimney cowl. So I'm pretty sure I'm at the top now because there's a bit of resistance, and I can hear that sort of um, metallic clinging, which I think is the cowl. So I'm fortunate enough, instead of going outside, I'm going to go up in my loft conversion that I'm halfway through. I'm going to look out the Velux window and we should be able to see the chimney from about two meters away. So there we are, I'm up in the loft and if you look there at the third cowl from the left, I'll just zoom in for you, 
There's the brush head, you can see those orange bristles, so we know we're at the top. So I'm going to go back down now and reverse the process. So if you're new to my channel and you're interested, this is my loft conversion and I've been uploading a series of videos showing every aspect of my loft conversion project. From fitting the joists, to constructing the dormers, to slating the roof, fitting Velux windows and anything else in between. So if you want to see more of that, then please go to my channel and check out my other videos and don't forget to subscribe. So I've actually got two rods left, I bought 12 metres, so my chimney is obviously 10 metres long, so I didn't need the extra two, but it's always handy to have them as spares anyway. So now I'm just going to reverse the process completely. On my drill, I'm going to change the function there, so it's now going to rotate anti-clockwise instead of clockwise, just to give a bit of different uh, clean-in rotation. We're going to take the rods out and we're just going to remove them one by one in the reverse order to how we put them together. Simple as that. And as I've just found out, this is the time to put your gloves on because obviously the rods are dirty coming back out. When releasing these rods, because that button is attached to the rod below, you're going in at that angle and pushing it in that direction down. And then that should come apart just like that. Now I know it's a bit fiddly, but it just means that you're levering it out in the direction of the rod. If you push the wrong way, you'll never get them undone. And exactly the same goes when releasing it from the drill. Because that there is connected to the drill, I put the Allen key in that way, like that, apply pressure, and then push backwards, like that. And then that way, it comes straight out, no problem at all. The other thing is, if the little button is underneath and it's awkward to get to, obviously just rotate your drill gently like that until you bring it back round to the top, like that, so it's easy to work on. All in all, I think I was pretty successful. I'm really pleased with that. I mean, the rods, because they're a nice shiny plastic, they don't really hold much dust on them, so they come out quite clean. The brush is the same. You know, it's not absorbent. It's made of nylon, I guess. So it's, again, it's quite clean. You just tapped all the ash off. And actually, with that plastic sheet as well that they provide, that's brilliant. I've cut it down. I've got loads left to do it again if I want to. I could reuse that bit of plastic if I stored it in the shed. Um, and I seem to have a, a decent amount of quite thick ash here. I probably should have done this a while ago, so I'll show you that now. So here we go. I'll just remove this. Now you might wonder why I left that in earlier as well. I left it because it was actually guiding my rod upwards for me so that it wasn't pushing into the back. I mean, that's up to you again whether you do that. For me, it worked. It slid it up into the flue nice and easily. That's the ash I've removed. Very successful, I'd say. Quite thick chunks there, and uh, I think I was probably well overdue. So, really impressed with that. So, I'm just going to clean this out with my Henry Hoover, which personally I find best. When I bought this wood burner, I did buy a Deville. I don't know if I say you pronounce it, like a triple filter ash vacuum, which was designated for doing this sort of stuff. And I've got to be honest, and I've got no problem saying it. It was absolute crap, absolute rubbish. It used to. After about 20 seconds of doing it, the ash would build up on the filter and there'd be no suction left. So I can't see the point in it. You're back and forth to the garden. It was a good Henry Hoover with the HEPA filter bags as they're meant to go with. I mean, you can pick those up for about 40, 50 pence a bag online. And I tell you what, that sucks it up no problem at all. And it keeps working at full capacity. And mine is about eight years old now and it's still going strong. So every time if you're doing this, I'd have one to keep for DIY. And if you want one for the house, keep that separate, nice and clean. Um, and it's perfect and you'll see that now. You can hear that. Absolutely perfect the suction on that after taking up all that ash because those bags they work a treat. Ooh. I didn't spot that did I? Look how much of that is in the tree. That was a hell of a lot of ash. So when you're doing this just make sure that you get all the ash off up above on the main tray and underneath. And as I just showed you while I was doing the hoovering then, look how much ash I had in that tray as well, I missed that. So, um, very, very successful, I'd say, using that product. 
So now I'm going to go and throw this in my compost heap because I only burn clean wood, so I'm quite happy to go and mix that up. Great for the garden. So I'm all tidied up and done, that's the job finished, but before I carry on I should say that the instructions recommend that you use some silicon based lubricant over the joints and that's basically just to maintain and protect them because the ash you collect there is very corrosive and if you leave those in the shed for a year or something and use them again you might find that they stick together and you get a little bit of corrosion. So worth doing that, keep it nice and lubricated and then next time you use them they should work no problem at all. Now my general thoughts on the product, it went together easily. Um, using the battery powered drill, it was brilliant, as long as you take your time. It went up my flue no problem at all. I know I've got a few sharp ends in this chimney. I brought down loads of ash, more than I ever thought I'd get out of there this year. So generally speaking, brilliant. The only one thing is, you could argue, is that the connectors are a little bit fiddly. But if you do what I showed you earlier, using that Allen key and sort of levering towards the male connector, they come out no problem at all. And personally, I would much rather than be stiff like that than to be loose and find you end up with your rods stuck in the chimney when they've come apart. So if you're generally practically minded, which I assume you would be if you're going to attempt a job like this, then putting those together and removing them really isn't a problem. It's something you sort of work out with your own little method in about five minutes. As for the brush head, like we said earlier in the video, you can trim that down to size. I didn't, it worked fine. The reason I did that, I got my open fire next door, which is a bigger flue, so I want to keep one head to do all the fireplaces in my property. That said, if you get in touch with sourcing for you, I'm sure they will sell you the head on its own so you can have a few different heads for your different chimneys and just connect them to the same set of rods. I'll put a link to the website where you can buy this product down below in the description section. Like I said, it's sourcingforyou.co.uk. And if you enjoyed this video, please give it a like, feel free to subscribe and press the bell symbol for regular notifications. And for more DIY, how-to, household tips and product review, please watch my other videos and don't forget to subscribe. I've been Pouse Around the House. Ta-ta, farewell.